had a little shake up this morning. So when we're getting that, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles. We are a spiritual community that comes together every Sunday morning. The Flames of Faith, the placard, thank you. Um, we come together every Sunday morning as a spiritual community to celebrate the unique individual nature that exists by means of you, while at the same time acknowledging the oneness of all life that exists equally through all of us at all times. We are an all-inclusive community, meaning that we honor all religions, all faiths, all expressions of life, no matter your gender, your size, your sexual orientation, your past religious beliefs, your potential future religious beliefs. Our goal here is to welcome one and welcome all and celebrate that thing that makes you, you, and that giving you an opportunity to use that in a way to... Um, Find your personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. That is the vision statement for our center, finding personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. So take that in for just a moment. I'm going to be speaking on that a bit more while we welcome Miriam in and Sherry and David. Let's get them settled and we will move into the next phase. Anybody know a good joke? No, I'm just kidding. I do, but I'm not going to tell it from here. So... <laughs> So let's take a moment and acknowledge everyone that's watching online. Hello, onlineers, live streamers. Last week, um, we had 40 people live streaming, wow. right? Mm, yes, great. The next stage is to train them to go to the donate button, so to pay for the live stream. But we're so happy that those are 40 people during the service, not to count later during that. So know that that's an option, and we're so happy to be able to offer that to you. Hi, Miriam. Good to see you. Everybody say hi to Miriam. Hi, hi Miriam. <laughs> we're kind of like we're turning into a 12-step program, right? <laughs> Only heard. I've never been to one, so, but I love them. We have a lot in common with them. So as you can tell, there's a lot of joy in the room this morning, and that's the goal, that you have a good time while opening yourself up to knowing who you are as a spiritual being. I see some new faces here today, so welcome to those of you that are here for the first time. We're not the kind of community that asks you to raise your hand and give you a rose or anything like that. Our goal here is to let you just open yourself up and see if you vibe to what you're hearing, if you commune with the people that are here, and if it's a good fit, we'd love to see you come back, and if not, we bless you on your journey in life. Life, no matter what that may be, knowing that you get to experience the divinity that's within you at all times. We open our service every Sunday morning. First off, let's acknowledge Sara Nurmi here with the camera. Sara works for us in the office now, and she is, um, Sara is filming today, and we're, we're, we are setting up a series of filming me outside of here as well as here um, to Put on our YouTube channel. Hopefully, you guys are familiar with our YouTube channel at this point. We every Tuesday, the follow the previous Sunday's message is edited and posted there. So you'll see her walking around and cameras up. And if you um, don't want to be photographed, take your hands and put them over your eyes like this. All right. So, all right. So Nancy's the first one now. All right. So we open our service every Sunday morning with a ritual called calling in the light, and it's performed and guided by the practitioner of the day, and I am your practitioner of the day. So I will take you through this process. It is looking at the qualities of the divine that exist within us. It has musical accompaniment to it, as well as at the end, there is a call and response part, which you get to sing along to that. Please do that. And then in the finale, there's what's called a spiritual mind treatment. In our philosophy and our teaching, spiritual mind treatment is a tool that Dr. Ernest Holmes developed that is basically affirmative prayer. It's prayer not in a supplication perspective. It's one that is affirming and declaring which we believe that which exists within us already, and that is the power of the divine, and that we both experience and express that through our thoughts and our beliefs and our actions and our reactions in life. So um, the goal of that is for you to anchor yourself into the room energetically, open yourself up to hearing something that speaks to you and um, knowing who you are as a divine being. I'd like to invite to the Bema, our illuminator of the day, our sound engineer for many years and a longtime member, Bob Zolinski. Please join us. Calling in the
The ritual that we perform this morning and every Sunday morning is called Calling in the Light. We perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one all abiding presence. It's that which we call spirit. Now the purpose of this ritual this morning is to draw into this gathering, this community that we're sharing in, in this moment, a conscious awareness of our oneness and to acknowledge the qualities that we possess as complete expressions of the divine. Bob lights the first candle for the quality of peace. Peace. In this way, we honor our inherent divine state of inner calm, regardless of any seeming chaos unfolding around or within us. As we move to the second candle, acknowledging the metaphysical quality that exists within us, he does that for the quality of power. Power is defined in metaphysical terminology as the power we acknowledge as the energy by which every single thing exists. And we move to the third candle, which is lit for the quality of beauty. In this context, beauty is known as a personal expression by which high spiritual qualities are made manifest moving us to the fourth candle. We light this candle for the quality of joy. Joy is defined in metaphysical terms as that state of being that is excited by the expectancy and experience of good. And we move now to the fifth candle, which is for the quality of light. Light and our philosophy is deemed as the symbol of divine intelligence. Moving to the sixth candle, Bob lights this candle for the quality of life. Life is defined as that animating principle of being. It's that inner something within all of us that makes us live. Moving to the seventh candle, it's illuminated for the quality of love. Love, not in traditionally human emotional terms, but love is defined in metaphysical terms as the self-givingness of spirit, the desire of life to express itself by giving of itself to itself through itself, which is us, which moves us to the eighth candle, which is the quality of wisdom. Wisdom in this concept and context is known as the concept of unity which is the mystical secret of the ages. Living from this perspective is indeed the key to wisdom. And as we move to our final candle, it's known as the healing candle. And I ask you to take a moment, think of someone which may include yourself, that you would like to silently put into the light of the healing flame to experience the eternal and everlasting love of the divine. I am love. I am love. I am peace. I am peace. In my heart. In my heart. I am free. I am free. I am spirit. I am spirit. I am soul. I all together, all together, we are all, we are all. calling in the
So I invite you to close your eyes if that feels comfortable and just feel the energy in the room. That energy of transformation that has taken place by means of transcendence. It's by letting go of any attachment to what was unfolding leading up to this moment. It's by feeling this resonance field of the qualities of the divine that exist within each of us equally. It's that sense of inner calm that exists in this moment. And so as I speak my word, I do so for each, every individual that's in this room and watching us online, whether live or later, that we know who we are as divine beings. That now is the time and today is the day that we release any attachment or need or delusion of control and open ourselves up to believe that we're here today by divine appointment, that that power of the divine has guided us into this moment to receive something that is the impetus to us finding our personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. It's to know and act in accordance to who we are as divine beings in a greater way today. It's allowing our ego to be placed outside of us in this building today and just being receptive to a higher idea making itself known through us. Letting go of any old vestiges of traditional religion, any beliefs that we are less than, and just simply sitting in the presence of the presence of the divine. And in so doing, a shift is occurring. We say thank you for the opportunity to be present for this to unfold by saying together, Amen, and so it is. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you so much. And yes. And Emily, and you're wrong. And all of you. So it's time for our first song by Emily. And she's got some really fun stuff to sing for us today. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing it, and I'm trusting you are as well. Emily Goliab. Ain't that the way it is? But you are beautiful in every single way. 
Yes, what can bring you down? No, no. You are beautiful, no matter what they say. Yes, what can bring you down? No, no. So don't you bring me down today. No matter what we do, no matter what we say, it's all inside of you, full of beautiful mistakes. And everywhere we go, the sun will always shine, and tomorrow we might wake us. We are beautiful, no matter what they say. Yes, words can bring us down, no, no. Yes, we are beautiful in every single way. Yes, words can bring us down, no, no. So don't you bring me down today oh, 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 oh. Don't you bring me down today Emily Golia, thank you, wonderful, quite beautiful. So Emily, you got all kinds of star bust and thumbs up and love signs on Facebook Live when you hit that note. They're like, oh, oh she, Tina, Tina Aguilera ain't got nothing on her. Uh-uh, Miss Christina, exactly. Good stuff, huh? Yeah, it makes it a very super Sunday, right? That's my one sports reference you're going to get. So take it. <laughs> that's it. Less maybe nachos, pigs in a blanket, something like that. But So <laughs> just for you, Ed Bell. All right. So for those of you that were, have been here over the last month, you know that I um, used the, for my message over the last four Sundays the the foundational points, the cornerstone of the teaching of the science of mind, which was the thing itself, how to use it, what it does, no, the thing itself, the way it works, what it does, and how to use it. And the purpose of those were to create a space for each of us to go on a journey, if you will, of looking at what we believe the power of the divine to be within us, using word, the word God, that three-lettered uh, word, if it works for you, and if it doesn't, don't, use something else. But the whole purpose of those four um, talks, and if you weren't here, and even if you were, if you want to see them again, you can get them on our YouTube channel, um, would be to um, start the year off by taking a look at what it is you as the individual believe the power of the divine that exists within you to be and how it works and how to use it. This morning I'm going to broaden on the four of those as I continue the message of um, you're finding your personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening, which I've now said three times this morning because I want to continue to drive that into each one of us to realize that that is our journey in life, is to find our personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. In other words, it's through that spiritual awakening of knowing who we are as divine beings and what we have access to in the universe as being expressions of the divine and being empowered from not only having that information, but then using it in a conscious, deliberate, purposeful manner. I'm going to start by reading a story to you this morning. A beggar had been sitting by the side of a road for over 30 years. One day a stranger walked by. Spare some change, mumbled the beggar, mechanically holding out his old baseball hat. I have nothing to give you, said the stranger. Then he asked the beggar, what's that you are sitting on? Nothing, replied the beggar, just an old box that I've been sitting on for as long as I can remember. Ever looked inside? asked the stranger. No, 
said to the beggar. What's the point? There's nothing in there. Have a look inside, insisted the stranger. The beggar stood up, managed to pry open the lid, and with astonishment, disbelief, and elation, he saw that the box was filled with gold. That the box was filled with gold. Now in this parable, what we're being informed and instructed to do with our life is to not simply just go looking, go looking for physical boxes of gold, but it's a metaphor for the greatest place to look for the ultimate in life, which is inside. This morning, it's my invitation and objective for each of us to create a new perspective in looking for the hidden treasure in our life. Eckhart Tolle, who wrote the book The Power of Now, says the multitude have not found their true wealth, which is the radiant joy of being and the deep, unshakable peace that comes with it, are indeed beggars, even if they have great material wealth. He goes on to say that they're looking outside for scraps of pleasure or fulfillment, for validation, for security or love, while they have a treasure within that not only includes all those things, but is infinitely greater than anything the physical world can offer. The title of my message to you this morning is Living Your Enlightenment. Not finding it, even though we need to find it first, but to live it. So often in self-help, um, motivational environments, and even in metaphysical teachings, we are told, even whether it's an Eastern philosophy or not, that we're here, as I tell you, to find your personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. That spiritual awakening is being on the journey of enlightenment, if you will. This morning, what I'm encouraging you to do, and including myself in that, is that we have feel like we've done the work to find that enlightenment. And I'm going to explain that more and more this morning as I get into it. But to not just hold that concept of enlightenment as a cerebral activity, to incorporate it from within. And the truth is we're not even incorporating it. What we're doing is we're awakening that which is already within us and living that from the inside out. That's the goal for all of us in life, to live from that perspective. Well, how do we find this pathway or journey of enlightenment, if you will? Well, I've already said that the way to do it, of course, is finding your personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. But how does one really do that? Well, then let's take a look at the word enlightenment itself. The word enlightenment conjures up the idea of some superhuman accomplishment. Would you guys agree on some level that when I say to you, live from enlightenment, you're like, what the hell does that mean? How do I do that, right? Stop eating fish on Fridays or, you know, whatever the case may be. Don't go to McDonald's or not cuss while I'm driving. Why do I do that, right? That it's superhuman. But the important thing for us to understand is that the ego likes to keep it that way for us. The human ego wants us to think of enlightenment or spiritual awakening or spiritual awareness is something that is beyond that which we can do as expressions of the divine. But living from enlightenment is just knowing that it's simply our natural state of felt oneness with being. What does that mean? Is that living from a place of knowing, feeling, experiencing, and expressing the oneness of all life and everything that we do, say, think, act on, believe, react to. Now that in and of itself is a massive charge. Would you not agree? Of course it is. However, it doesn't mean that it is unobtainable. It's living from a place where the state of connectedness with something immeasurable and indestructible is there in our mind, in our heart, in our soul, in our being, in our actions. It's living almost paradoxically that, is an, that we're living from a place that is essentially us, what is natural to us, innate to us, and yet is also greater than us. It is finding our true nature which is beyond name and form. The inability to feel this connectedness of being interconnected, of oneness, is, gives rise to the illusion of being separate from each other, from ourself and the world around us. And in so doing, when we live from that place, we perceive ourselves, whether consciously or unconsciously, as an isolated fragment of life. Anyone in the room ever felt as if you were an isolated fragment of life? Some of us may have done it at 8.53 this morning, right? I know I did. There were moments when I was like, ah, 
Why is this happening? But the thing about understanding oneness, it doesn't mean that we're separate from life itself. Living from a place of oneness is about understanding how to incorporate a mindset of oneness when things show up that seem to be contradictory to that. Enlightenment, as I said before, is a big idea. Fear arises when we're living from this place of separation and conflict and chaos exists. This week in our class on practical mysticism, we consciously decided to look at and to dissect what it was like when we're living from a place of confusion and chaos. And in that moment, is there any less presence of the divine? Is there any less presence of the divine within us? Is the law of life working any less? And the spiritual truth is, in this philosophy and teaching, which is there's only one thing ever taking place, it's the activity of the divine, that the spiritual laws are always working in the only way that they can through us, is that they don't get a break. And then to know that there's also not a, not a power outside of us that's bringing into our experience of life consciously or purposely chaos or confusion. Well, how do we find enlightenment? The great teacher Buddha defines it in this way simply. Enlightenment is the end of suffering. Take that in for a moment. Enlightenment is simply the end of suffering. Now, I don't know about you, when I first read that, I thought, well, who the hell does he think he is, right? Who can, who can end suffering? But when you take a step back, he's not saying end suffering for all time. He's saying end suffering, meaning that we have the opportunity in the moment to stop suffering and live in that place of being less suffering. I don't think it's suffer less. That's not the right word, right? To be in that place of not suffering, of peace and in calm, until what? Until you're no longer there. And then where do you go? Back to that place of choosing peace and power and beauty and joy and light and life, love and wisdom. Enlightenment, which once again is a big idea, is both a noun and not a noun. As a noun, it's known as the action of enlightening or the state of being enlightened. But the concept of enlightenment that I think speaks to what we're looking for here today and continuing to look for in life is a European intellectual movement of the late 18th, 17th and 18th centuries emphasizing reason and individualism rather than tradition. It's heavily influenced by 17th century philosophers such as Descartes, Locke, and Newton, and its prominent exponents include Kant, Goth, Voltaire, Rousseau, and Adam Smith. What that tells us is in, there was a time in the evolution of humanity where we realized the humans on the planet at the time that were enlightened, that we have the opportunity in life, should we choose to do so, to live from a place that is non-traditional. In other words, live from a place that is not governed by the physical world which means that living from a place that is a metaphysical perspective. That is what we teach here. It's, a, it's metaphysics. It's believing that we have the power within us to both engage and play part of the causation to experiences in our life through our thinking, through our beliefs, through our actions, through our reactions, and our interactions. Now, I know I've said that more than once this morning, but I do so for the purpose to let us know that the process really is quite simple. And yet the paradox is it seems so incredibly complex, right? But what we're being told there is to not judge our lives based on what's going outside of our psyche, our soul, and our being is that to, if we want to shift that which is going on in the external, the focus is an internal process. Enlightenment, if you will, is like a seed becoming a flower. It's the blossoming of who we as spiritual beings, conscious spiritual beings are, and who we are meant to be as we walk this beautiful place that we live called Mother Earth. And to know that who we are becoming, sorry, it just popped off, who we are becoming even who we are becoming even from the moment of birth was to be enlightened beings. Well, what is enlightenment in that concept? Well, it's written that it is a transcendent way of life. It's the gateway, if you will, to a high consciousness. Maharashi Mahesh Yogi has described the seven states of consciousness, which we are all on that process. And we're all familiar with the first three, waking, dreaming, 
and sleeping. Would you guys agree that you're all familiar with those? Any of them, in, are any of you in the dreaming or sleeping state right now? I'm going to trust no. The fourth state, the fourth state. <laughs> hold on a second. <clears throat> Let me get my masculinity back. The fourth state. No. The fourth state, the Maharashi says, is transcendental consciousness, which has both unique physiological parameters and is, and is the basis for the gateway for unfolding the higher states of consciousness. What he's telling us here is that we have the capacity to rise above living life solely from the waking, dreaming, and sleep states. Is that we have the capacity in the fourth level of consciousness to rise above, to transcend above the traditional ways of life. Well, how do we do that? We do that by focusing on our soul. We do that by focusing on our minds. We do that by focusing on the power that exists within us and choosing to live from the place of A, oneness, and the qualities that exist within us as the oneness of life itself. The Tao says the way to finding the journey of enlightenment is one of a thousand miles and it begins with one step. The journey of enlightenment is the same. It really begins when you dive deep within your soul, in your psyche, in your being, and experience the silent depths of your mind. In our class on practical mysticism, we've been looking at um, spiritual practices that began with centering, where we stop and just take a moment in class and then homework as well to just center yourself. I invite you to do that right now. Close your eyes for just one moment. And just center your energy field. As if it's, it's a puzzle and everything's falling into place. And now let's do that as a collective in the room. And now take a deep breath. And allow yourself to go deeper into your soul as you exhale. And open your eyes now. What you just experienced was the actions of that one step. You just experienced that journey of enlightenment. You just experienced the journey of centering who you are as an individualized expression of the divine. And then allowing it to rise up. You all felt it, right? You felt it individually when it all fell into place. Energetically, you could feel it in the room. And then we consciously decided to do it together in the room. And standing where I'm at, I could feel the room go. It fell into place. That exists because of the oneness of life that we are. We are interconnected in a way that is beyond the physical. And that's how one lives a transcendent life, is by going about your day and your days and your week consciously having that practice. When the muck and the mire and the crap and the chaos shows up in life, not getting caught up in that, but taking a step back either literally or metaphorically and closing your eyes and taking a deep breath and centering yourself into the oneness of life, who is that which is balance and harmony and peace and power and beauty and joy and light, life, love and wisdom. And then not only just knowing that for yourself, but knowing that for everyone and everything around you. Not only just that you can see everything around you. And then in that moment, owning that feeling and then believing that that experience showed up for you as an opportunity to experience that which you desire, which is a life of enlightenment, one step at a time. But it can't happen if you sit back and wait for it to come to you. You have to step into it and use what's going on in life. But what's going on in life is life itself. The great teacher Ram Dass says that every single thing in our life is a vehicle for transformation. So use it. So use it. The key to using it is stepping up and doing the work. Once again, in this class that we're taking, and for those of you that might want to come check it out one Wednesday night, come check it out. It is fun. It's fun. It's deep. It's um, complex. 
It's easy and it's not easy all at the same time. But what it's showing us in this philosophy and this teaching is to go beyond simply the cerebral concept of being interconnected as expressions of the divine and looking at it from ways where we awaken within us a new perspective. It's from understanding how the laws of life work in a way that we're drawing into our field of experience things that otherwise would have seemed magical. But we understand they're mystical, not magical. It's looking at the divine in a mysterious, sacred way and then getting tools on how to live life on a daily basis. One of the ways of understanding who we are as a spiritual being and engaging a practice of that that we've learned in this teaching is spiritual detachment. Spiritual detachment seems to be contrary to what I'm telling you to do, right? But using your mind and your soul and your being, understanding that what comes with the process of awakening is wisdom, choosing it to guide you, is to then understand when is there time to detach from the outside world and focus on the inside world. Well, the truth is almost all the time. Does it mean that you do that not being aware of the external? Does it mean that you're not participating in the external, but approaching the external from the inside first? Spiritual detachment means this. Detachment is not that you should own nothing, but that nothing should own you. Ahas, I heard some aha. Should I read it again? Should I do a dance with it? No. All right. Detachment is not that you should own nothing, but that nothing should own you. The practice that we had daily for spiritual detachment had these seven steps, and I'm going to share them with you this morning because I think it's important for us to hear them, and, and even if you only take one or two of them out of here today, use that as a spiritual practice to awaken your mind to the possibilities of the oneness of life and what is yours to do. I think it's good for you to hear them, and it's this. Number one, I recognize my feelings without letting them control me. Process that one for a second. Who thinks they can do that? You all can do that. Raise your hands. You all can do that. Doesn't mean you have to do it all day, every day, but if you do it once, then you've learned that you can do it again. And after you've done it the second time, you've realized it's easier for the third time, and the fourth, and the fifth. The journey of a thousand miles of enlightenment begins with one step. The second is to resist interfering with others' spiritual journey. Ha, <laughs> who responded to that? That goes in line with the one I shared last week from my first teacher who said there should only be one commandment. Mind your own business. The third is, <laughs> I choose to act instead of react. Who finds that one easy? And that's not just reacting to someone else. It's reacting to life. It's reacting to the television. It's reacting to traffic. It is reacting. All right? Number four, I free myself from impulses and cravings. Who likes sugar? Anybody in the room? Who likes caffeine? Who likes alcohol? Who likes the news? Fill in the blank, right? The key here is freeing yourself from it, right? Doesn't mean that you don't turn it back on or drink it or whatever, but the minute it happens, think about that again. I listen in order to understand, I have the humility to amend my mistakes, and I lead my life by soul choices. What we're really talking about here is moving from a place to find enlightenment, to transcend from not an enlightened life to a transcendent life, is to let ourselves consciously get out of the way of our own ego. That's what's holding us back. When we do that, we can truly experience love from the inside out as an intrinsic part of our nature and as an intrinsic part of all creation. When we experience love in this way, not human love, the self-givingness of spirit whose desire is to create more of itself out of itself, we find our calling in life, not necessarily the calling for what we're supposed to do between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. on a day, but the calling from life itself. And as we find that calling, we choose to live our lives from a more authentic perspective. And ultimately, what we find is that we're living our lives from bliss. Who in the room would like to have one little bit more of bliss than you had when you, before you walked in? All of us, right? Why? Because that's how we're supposed to live our lives. We're called here to live a life of bliss. We're call, we are called here to live a life of bliss. 
Why? Because that's innate within us. It's also one of the highest spiritual qualities that exist. It's one of the highest spiritual qualities that exist if you look at the map of consciousness, according to David Hawkins. You've heard me talk about that before, and he has a consciousness scale from zero to 700, then to 1,000, and the highest, up there in the highest, that ranks right before you become Buddha or Jesus or Allah or Mother Teresa or those that are out there that walk on water, right below that is living a life of bliss. It's where your view of life is a God view, of an all being of oneness. It's where your view of life is that every single thing, no matter what shows up, no matter what shows up, is perfect. It's living from a place where your internal vibrational frequency is of peace, and it's knowing that no matter what is unfolding, bliss It's what you're exuding and expressing. Therefore, that's what you're attracting back into your world. And the process of that is living from a place of illumination. Today, I encourage you and I invite you to choose blissful thinking, blissful believing, blissful living in your life as you move through life itself allowing the healing qualities of a high level of consciousness to be revealed to you and to be easy with yourself on the journey. I talked about this last week. This teaching, this philosophy, this way of living is not for the faint of heart. Why? Because there's no, nothing external to turn to. There's no power beyond you that you can drop to your knees and ask it to forgive you. There's no power beyond you that you can ask to give you or guide you into something different as if it is sitting there in a chair that's a stone chair in a cute white robe dispensing or dispersing your good. This teaching is is that every single thing that exists in the universe already exists and for you and I to experience more and more of the goodness, the allness, the completeness, the perfection that is God, we must do the work. We must open ourselves up. We must allow that which is to be revealed through us. And to remember that healing, which is what we're doing here, comes in waves. And that maybe today the wave will hit the rocks, and that's okay. But just to know that no matter what shows up in life, you're healing. Healing, as Dr. Ernest Holmes says, is revealing the divinity, the oneness, the allness that already exists within you. Now, I don't know about you guys, but for me, every time I hear that, I find that so empowering to know that there's nothing that I have to do to invite in the power that is greater than I am, but exists equally within me and all of us. It's already there. However, there's a lot we got to do to experience it. Not because it's telling us that, but because that's its nature. And what we get to do to experience more and more and more and more of it is to choose how we're expressing more and more and more and more of it. We get to do that by raising our consciousness, by choosing love, by choosing forgiveness, by choosing release, and to know that at all times we are on a journey one step at a time of knowing who we are. And who we are is a complete, whole, fulfilled perfect expression of that which is. Have a great Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to welcome to the BEMA, Emily and Yaron. You might recognize this next song, right? I used to bite my tongue and hold my breath Scared to rock the boat and make a mess So I sat quietly 
agreed politely I guess that I forgot I had a choice I let you push me past the breaking point I stood for nothing So I fell for everything You held me down but I got up Already brushing off the dust You hear my voice, you hear that sound Like thunder gonna shake the ground You held me down, but I got up Get ready cause I've had enough I see it all, I see it now I got the eye of the tiger Fighter, dancing through the fire Cause I am a champion and you're gonna hear me roar louder, louder than the lion Cause I am a champion And you're gonna hear me roar, 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 roar. You're gonna hear me roar Now I'm floating, oh. <laughs> Now I'm floating like a butterfly Stinging like a bee, I earned my stripes I went from zero to my own hero You held me down, but I got up Already brushing off the dust You hear my voice, you hear that sound Like thunder gonna shake the ground You held me down cause I got up Already brushing off the dust You held me down but I got up I got the eye of the tiger Fire dancing through the fire Cause I am a champion And you're gonna hear me roar Louder, louder than a lion Cause I am a champion And you're gonna hear me roar Golia and your own speedway. <laughs> Bet you never thought you'd walk into a spiritual center and be asked to sing Katy Perry song and go, oh, 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 right? <laughs> it's a new world, baby. Um, roar. Roar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Release your spiritual feline. Roar. 
Okay. Oh, I can see your caffeine's worn off. Okay, <laughs> time for more caffeine and sugar. <laughs> All right, good. So. Um, so let me give you some, uh, let's do our uh, donations, please. If we can have our ushers come forward. So as a spiritual community, we um, both survive and thrive based on your conscious giving, is what we call it here. It's an opportunity to participate in um, giving of your financial good in a way that um, both serves our spiritual community and hopefully we have served you and your spiritual awakening. And so um, take out that which you are donating and place it close to your heart if you feel good with that. I invite you to do that because the heart's the symbol for love and I like for us to give from a place of love. And repeat after me our affirmation. Conscious giving heals all fear. It awakens and enlivens my awareness that I am one with an abundant universe. It is evidence of, of my conscious awareness of my purposefully participating in finding and living for my enlightenment. In finding and living for my enlightenment. So today, I give, I give with love and know and know, and know that I know, and know that it absolutely, absolutely returns to me, returns me multiplied, abundantly. multiplied abundantly and so it is. This to give to be simple, this to give to be free, this to give to come down to where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, we will be in the valley of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend, we shouldn't be ashamed. To turn, turn, will be our delight Till by turning, turning we come round right um, Katy Perry <laughs> <laughs> It's all good, right, Miss Music Woman? It's all good, right? Good stuff, so Absolutely. So I've got some announcements for you. Um, our weekly e-newsletter goes out weekly. It goes out usually every Tuesday if you'd like to receive that. You can sign up back at the table where Reverend Edward is called the welcome table. The forum looks like this. We request that you print legibly um, so that I can read it or that Sarah can read it when she's downloading it into our files. Um, just want to remind you, as I didn't when we were just giving donations, that your options for giving donations here are cash, check, charge, or you can give through our app. And we just moved the donate button up higher on the app, so it's very accessible and visual if you need that, as well as through our website. Um, you can do that. Um, just a reminder that we sent out uh, year-end donations reports to everyone that donated annually 250 or more. Hopefully you all got them. If you didn't, if you have questions, feel free to check in with me. Um, and we can figure that out. We continue with our Wednesday morning meditation class, Wednesday morning guided meditation. That's a 30-minute guided online meditation that you can call in in the morning and just um, take it in. And it's a great way to not only get you through the hump part of the week, but a great way to stimulate you through your day and anchoring and centering you. Our Wednesday class is continuing this Wednesday night on practical mysticism. I've spoke of it a couple of times today. Um, feel free to join us if you would like. It's at 715 um, here in the building. So please come and join us. Um, Friday, we're continuing with the uh, Spirit of Dance class that takes place at the Hollywood Dance Center on Highland. It's also in our newsletter. Uh, the famed choreographer Walter Painter teaches that. It's $15. It's about anywhere between 60 and 75 minutes of fun, some fun dancing and learning, a short little jazz routine, some exercise as far as stretches. It's just a great uh, way to come together and um, Struck your stuff. 
Um, so I wanted to let you know to watch out in the newsletters. We've got some fantastic guest speakers coming in. Um, in February, on the 18th, we have one of my long, long, long time, well, they're actually long, both long time, dear souls, brothers of mine. Uh, the first will be Dr. David Alt who will be here on, as I said, February 18th. He's the spiritual leader of the, um, the Spiritual Center for Living in Atlanta, Georgia. He's a contemporary of mine. I love him. He does amazing work around the world, and um, he'll be really fantastic. Um, great for you to hear a different perspective. Not that you're tired of me, but a different perspective. And the other will be in March, and it's Dr. Jim Lockhart, who's also um, a bro of mine, who's, um, who in the room has ever said to me that I'm very cerebral? Many of you, right? Right. Wait till you hear Jim. So, makes me look very elementary. Um, but totally both great guys, great perspectives on metaphysics. I encourage you to block those days on your calendars and to be here. So, good day today, huh? Yeah. Good day. A huge thank you to our... A huge thank you to our musicians, Joran Spiewak. Always fun having you back here when he's here, right? And Emily Golia, love having you here. Fantastic. Um, a big thank you to Bob and Jesus for set up this morning, and it was a lot of work to set up today. Loved it. Um, we were missing our little Irwin today. I like the setup of the room a little different, you guys. Yeah, good. So we'll shake it up a little bit. On that note, if you have any constructive criticism, please see um, our board member of today, which is Matt Fonda, right? And um, also let you know that we invite you to hang out after the service. We have um, things for you to eat and to drink. Um, and the, well, you'll, you'll see if you want it. So I'll let it go with that. No more editorial needed. Side of the building's open, and um, I think that's it. I think I've covered everything. Okay, so let's close with the spiritual mind treatment. I'm going to include in the spiritual mind treatment, I was just informed while she was singing that one of our members has been rushed to the hospital. And so um, I'm gonna include her in the healing component of that. It's Carol Robbins, and so let's just know for her as we do truth and um, We'll go from there. So um, let's pray out. So I invite you to close your eyes if that feels good. If not, then don't. So as we close this service today, that which is known as the celebration service at the Center for Spiritual Living, Los Angeles, what I know for each one of us today is that we have experienced joy throughout just as we began this service. It's a reminder to us of the opportunity in life to live from a higher vibrational frequency. We choose bliss in every opportunity in life. Not because we think we're better than anything else or anyone else, simply because we're aware of the opportunity that we have with every thought to choose anew, to choose beliefs and thoughts and act in accordance to that which is our divine nature. Today, I know for us as a group who have come together here in this space at 1200 North La Brea Avenue, West Hollywood, California, at 10 a.m. on Sunday, February 4th, 2018, Super Bowl Sunday, that we've come here together to kick off a greater awakening than we've had before. We covenant and commit together today that we're here to acknowledge the humanity that exists within each other while deeply moving into that place of divinity. Understanding that there truly is no separation between the two. And yet it's by looking within and living from within that we transcend that which unfolds at the human level. Today is a day that we let go and detach from that which does not serve us as we walk this pathway of life. Today is the day that we declare and claim for ourselves we are enlightened beings. And so from this place of enlightenment, we create in our mind's eye an energy field of healing. And we send that healing energy out to our beloved Carol Robbins and all that she's experiencing in this moment, what appears to be chaos and crisis. We know that we have the capacity through our minds and our thoughts and our beliefs to invoke that healing by knowing the spiritual truth that there's only one activity ever taking place. And so all that are engaged with Carol in this moment is a reflection of the peace and the power and the beauty and the joy and the light and the life and the love of God. And that wisdom is guiding every step, every thought, every interaction. 
and that this situation reveals its wholeness. We know that this is true for each and every one of us in the room and all who have watched us online. For today is the day that we move forward, awakened and alert and alive to who we are as divine beings. We appreciate and have gratitude for the opportunity to be awake, alert, and alive, and we go forward having a blessed, fun, celebratory day. And when all else fails, we roar. Because that's what we're brought here to do, is to live life fully. We let it be by saying together, and so it is. Thank you. Have a great Sunday. I'll see you out there, and enjoy the flower products. Brushing off the dust to hear my voice, to hear that sound like thunder gonna shake the ground. You held me down, but I got up. Get ready, cause I've had enough. You hear my voice, you hear that sound. I got the eye of the tiger, fighter, dancing through the fire, cause I am a champion and you're gonna hear me roar louder louder than a lion cause i am a champion and you're gonna hear me roar 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 you're gonna hear me roar roar champion you're gonna hear me roar louder louder than a lion cause i am a champion you're gonna hear me roar 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 you're gonna hear me roar 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 you're gonna hear me roar